All right, so here's something I find extremely fascinating, and that is this, that when I listen to the vast majority of prospecting calls from real estate agent to homeowner, most of those conversations are two people going back and forth. It's almost like they're in this, uh, this tug of war. It's agent trying to convince prospect and it's prospect resisting the agent. Agent tries to come back with some fancy objection handler, and it's this this back and forth. Quite frankly, it's pretty painful to listen to. And if you go back and listen to any of these calls, maybe you listen to some of your own calls, it is pretty cringy to hear some of these conversations. The question is why? Why is it that for the vast majority of us in this industry, want to do the right thing for our prospective clients and for ourselves in that building our business, we know that we have to prospect. We know that we have to go out there and generate conversations with people that we know and people that we don't know. We know this, but why is it that for the vast majority of those conversations, they are so painful? That prospects resist you most of the time. That prospects... um give you the objections that you feel like you're faced with all the time. What's going on here? Well, I'm going to share all of that. Part of it is not your fault, by the way. Part of it is because of what is being taught in this industry. And I continue to scour the internet looking for looking at all of these uh, real estate gurus and all the scripts that they're giving to all of you. And the same ones are given to me. And what we're being trained to do, I believe, is at the root cause of what puts us in a position to be in conflict, not just with prospects, but with ourselves. Because most of you tell me, um, man, these scripts that I'm that I'm using, do they just don't feel like me? I feel so salesy. I feel slimy when I use them. Thus, the reason you try to avoid prospecting at all cost. Okay, there's two concepts that you have to really, really understand so that you know what's going on here. And then I'm going to break down the types of questions that you're asking that are hurting you, that are not helping you further the conversation, not helping you get more appointments, not helping you get more listings, not helping you acquire more clients, but it's doing the opposite. And so we'll break those questions down in just a second. But before we do that, we have to break down two concepts. Because here's the thing that I know. When I look at most the, the way that most of these real estate scripts are written, I know immediately that whoever is writing these scripts or whoever is suggesting that someone use these language patterns, A, either A, they don't sell real estate themselves, so they're not using them. Or B, um, they don't understand human dynamics. They don't understand human behavior. And it's clear they don't. Because the first concept that we have to understand is something called psychological reactants. And you know the thing is about psychological reactants is that when you communicate in a certain way, you are the one causing the prospect to resist you. A lot of times we want to blame the prospect. Oh, that guy was a real jerk. Oh, she was a real you know what. No, no, no. It's us most of the time eliciting this type of response. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on, I'm going to share a couple short clips from some social psychologists so that you can really grasp these concepts that I'm going to, that I speak about all the time that I'm going to introduce you to once again in this video, all right? So um, the first one we're going to listen to is from social psychologist Andy Luttrell, and he's going to talk to you about psychological reactance. So take a listen to this. It's no secret that people don't like to be told what to do, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody. I know that for me, the more someone tells me that I cannot have fast food, I only want to have fast food all the more, right? If someone tells me that I can't do something, what do I want to do? Exactly that thing. I think that's a fairly common experience. In psychology, this idea is called reactance, 
which means that people don't like to feel like their freedom of choice is being threatened. If I feel like you're making me do something, you're trying to control me, I react really poorly to it. And a lot of times what happens is that people go ahead and do the opposite. They'll do something that completely counters the thing that they feel like they're being made to do. This is a problem for persuaders, because what is persuasion and influence but trying to get people to do the things you want them to do? So you need to be careful and know that people aren't going to be super open to the fact that you want to guide their behaviors and opinions. Okay. So this is the first concept. And again, when I look at this, the way that these scripts are written, that is all that is happening most of the time. Is you ask questions that we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you some, some really good examples of questions to uh, stop asking immediately. All these questions elicit psychological reactants because the prospect feels as though their freedom to choose. That's the sales pressure that you all know. That's the thing that you don't like. Uh, uh, you don't like to communicate that way. That's the way you're coming off. That's the way it's being perceived as the prospect. So of course the prospect has to defend themselves from you because they're feeling pressured to do something. This is the foundation of why salespeople have such a bad reputation in the first place. Is because the way that salespeople are being taught is eliciting this psychological reactance. This is that tug of war, that back and forth, that conflict. You come across like you're trying to convince them to do something against their own will, even if it is in their best interest. They still resist you because of how you're communicating. All right, that's psychological reactance. The next concept I want to introduce you to is something that I that, that's called perceived bias. And so let me bring on Dr. Laura Wallace, another social psychologist. Listen to how she explains this, and then we'll break this down, and I'll show you the exact questions you guys are all asking, because I took them from all these famous real estate uh, gurus script books, and we'll break down why they're not working. All right, so let me share my screen. Um, okay, so a core thing that's going on there especially for um, when people are selling products is it, it's very obvious to message recipients or, or the person who's receiving the message uh, that that person has a vested interest. So salespeople get something out of selling their products. Um, of course they do. And people are aware of that and that can make them seem biased. Um, it, it can also make them seem untrustworthy or dishonest and those perceptions of bias and untrustworthiness can lead people to dismiss a message from uh, that person. I have tested and there, I have some good evidence for is acknowledging some downsides of your product can be really effective in reducing perceived bias. So um, it seems counterintuitive to say it can be a really good thing to say your product has some negatives, but that can make you seem less biased, um, which can make you more persuasive. Um, okay. All right, so that's perceived bias. And again, all these things, when I look at these scripts and the way they're written, and I know I get a little excited about this, but it's frustrating that a lot of you, when I, when I listen to you prospect, it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be, you call prospect, prospect gets upset, they start to resist you, then you try to fight back, you try to use some objection handle that you learn and some from, from some other person, and that, that just makes things worse because you're eliciting more reactants and yet again, more perceived bias, all right? So I'm gonna probably break this into like a two or three part series. So this video, I'm gonna share with you the types of questions that you're asking and what's going on here, all right? So let me share my screen and show you exactly what I'm talking about, all right? So the types of questions that elicit what we just learned, which is the psychological reactance and perceived bias are what we would call yes-oriented questions. Yes-oriented questions. So these are questions that are on almost every script book that I can find on the internet 
that when asked, is it attempts to get agreement from the prospect to say, yes, I want that thing, but most often gets the exact opposite. It's the prospect that feels the reactants, feels the perceived bias, and responds with some type of resistance, and then you try to get around it, try to convince them, try to persuade them to continue to do the thing that you are asking them to do, and as you are well aware, they start to dig in their heels and things get worse for you. So let me give you the first example. The first example of this, it's on almost every script book that I see, says, can I stop by one day this week to show you how I'm getting homes sold? Okay, so let's talk about this. Again, the question is designed for the prospect to say, uh, yeah, sure. Like they were just waiting around, hoping a realtor was going to call them and uh, ask to come over to their house to show them what they do to get properties. Yeah, never going to happen. So when this person says, can I stop by one day to show you how I'm getting homes sold? Okay, number one, who is the beneficiary of that question if the prospect were to say yes? The prospects are not dumb. It's just like Dr. Laura Wallace was talking about. This question, the way that it gets perceived from the homeowner is that this is a commissioned salesperson calling me, wanting to come to my house so that they can list my property. Why? So that they can get a commission. This entire script is about one person. Who is it? It's all about the realtor. And that's how it lands. It lands with the prospect and says, uh, even if the prospect wants to sell their home, this is the problem with this type of language. Even if they wanted to sell their home, you elicit the reactance from the person because you're attempting to bulldoze your way to come over to their house. So they start to resist that. That's the reactance part, right? And then the other part of this, so I can show you how I'm getting homes sold. Well, the only reason you why you want to show me how you're getting home sold is so that what? Oh, so I can list my house with you so you can earn a commission. Ah, got it. No, I'm good. All set. Not interested. Take me off your list. Never call me back again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's why it elicits that type of response. Okay, well, let's look at the next uh, example. Are you planning to interview other agents to get your home sold? Okay. Again, another popular question on most of these scripts that I see out there. And yet again, this question is designed to, is 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 being asked and presented to benefit who? This is all about the realtor yet again. You call a prospect out of the blue and you ask them, "Hey, when are you planning to interview other agents to get your home sold?" In other words, you might as well say, when can I come over so that you can give me some of your money? I mean, this is a concrete example of commission breath. That's how it lands with the prospect. The prospect is not going, most of the time, is not going to respond in your favor. That question is going to elicit reactants. They're going to push back on you. Because it's obvious what you're doing. It's so obvious what you're doing here that the prospect says, okay, th- this is just another uh, needy, desperate, greedy realtor wanting to come over and pitch me on listing my house. Nope, I'm good. I'm not interested. No, I'm not. Uh, inter- no, I'm not selling. Leave me alone. Stop calling me. Can you people stop calling me? That's what they tell you. Yeah? You guys know it's true. And it's because of this type of language. All right, let's do another one. Okay. Are you interested in selling your home? Okay. Even if the person was interested in selling their home, coming from a realtor, a commission salesperson, this person thinks to themselves, okay, I've got a choice to make here. If I say yes to this realtor, what do I think is going to happen? Well, they've already demonstrated that they're trying to persuade me to get a sale. So if I say, yes, I'm interested in selling my home, what do I think is going to happen next? Oh, that's right. They're going to be all over me to try to come over my house and sell me on why I should use them. And lo and behold, 
That is exactly what happens if they say yes to that question. So what do they say most of the time? Nope, not interested, not selling. I'm staying here forever. They're going to have to take me out of here. I'm gonna, they're going to bury me in this house. And then a week goes by and they've got a for sale sign in their front yard. How in the world did that happen? Well, it's because it's a bad question. This question was, is, is set up to fail for you to get people to resist you. Can't use it. Doesn't work. Okay, let's do another one. If there was an advantage to use me to market your home, would you consider it? Okay, again, who is that all about? It's all about the realtor. It's all about the realtor. It's all about me. It's all about list your house with me. It's all about let me convince you to list your house with me. It's all about me getting paid. There's no surprise why that script, again, took it right off someone's website, gets absolutely destroyed in the real world when you talk to real humans. Does not work. Let's use another one. If I can show you how I can get your home sold in the next 30 days, would you be interested in meeting with me? Nope, not interested. Take me off your list. I don't want to meet with you. Because again, you're asking the question for the person to say yes. This is a yes-oriented question. And more times than not, it's not going to work. Now, yes, if you do enough of anything, certainly from time to time it will work. But for the vast majority of the time, you know this because you're probably using some of these scripts. You're getting just crushed on this. You are, you know, as soon as you ask this question, you're asking for some type of an objection. You know it. And now you're like, crap, this is why I hate prospecting. This is why I avoid it every day. This is why I try to do all these shiny objects. This is why I try to chase all these marketing things. This is why I don't want to do this. It's not all your fault. You're asking bad questions. Okay, let me give you two more. Let's meet. Well, let's do this. Let's meet for 15 minutes so uh, you can see what it will take to get your home sold. What would be better, Wednesday or Friday? Oh, so painful. The old forced choice clothes. Like prospects are that naive. It's almost insulting. I would call it gross. The forced choice clothes in 2024. You're going to do, you sly old fox, you. You're going to do the, the forced choice clothes. It's on almost every single script I've downloaded. It's on almost every single one. Like the prospects never heard that before. You guys, it's just insane. Lastly, all this BS. I sell more. Well, I sell more than this person. I sell more than uh, than anybody else. I just keep doing the same thing. Uh, I sell. We we sell uh, more properties like this than anybody else in the market. We have more listing uh, uh, market share than anybody else. We're number one. Blah, 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 blah. Who talks like that? Somebody who has an incentive to give you some money, right? The only person who talks like that, what does it sound like they're doing? Why would somebody talk that way? Because they are giving you their reasons on why they think you should Hire them and give them money. Well, what do we know about reactants? As soon as you feel pressured to do something and you have lost the freedom to choose and make your own decision, compliance drops dramatically. Even if the person wants to do what it is you're asking them to do, but because of how you're communicating, they are more motivated to do the opposite. And so these are the types of questions we have to stop asking. Now, all of you are saying, okay, you just spent the last 20 minutes, Brandon, telling us what not to do. What are you advising we should do in exchange? Well, that's where I'm going to make part two of this video. I'll release it later this week.